Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop from the Pixar movie Onward. It's the Curse Crusher. It's made from the finest materials of all the land. To make my pattern, I found a 4K size poster of Cory holding her sword. I did some guesstimation on size and decided that about 4 feet long would be a good size for this sword. I'll put a link for this file in the description if you want to make one for yourself as well. So I'm going to make this. Well, actually, everything is EVA foam, right? So I'm going to make the blade out of two or three layers of EVA foam. The cross guard will be multiple layers. This is wood. Probably into making that narrower. Then the pommel. All right. I decide on three layers of 10 millimeter HD foam for the blade. I cut all three pieces of the blade a little larger than my pencil marks. I'll cut them down to the correct size after they're glued together. So like any foam sword, even a foam sword of this size, I'm going to need a core. Now I'm going to go old school, at least for me. I'm going back to using a golf club. Do I want to do a... Now I've been enjoying making the tips so you can actually set them down. That's really nice. I might do that. I might epoxy a smaller bit into this one so I can get it down to the tip. So let's cut this up first. I use a heavy duty cutoff wheel to remove the golf club head and remove the rubber grip as well. I widen the hole at the end of the graphite shaft to five and a half millimeters so it'll fit my smallest carbon fiber tube. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I mark the tube where I want to cut it because I want it to fit out to the tip of the sword. And then I use the cutoff wheel again. A little five minute epoxy will glue the tubes together and a bit on the end will soften the sharp end of the tube. I gave the core a chance to set and then marked where it needs to fit in the center layer of the blade. I used my Cos Tools straight cutter to cut a space needed for the golf club to set, and I'm careful not to cut all the way through the foam. I want to finish the cut with a razor knife because cutting mats will dull Cos Tools blades very quickly. I use contact cement to glue the layers of the blade together. I cover both parts of the layer of cement and then let them dry for about 10 minutes and then I can stick the two pieces together. I drew a line on the bigger piece to help me place it correctly. When I glue on the second half of the middle layer, I put the core in place first. That way, I know I'll have a snug fit. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's heavy. That's actually heavy. All right. How much does this stick up? Not a whole lot. Enough. Not a whole lot. I should probably run the router Dremel down, Dremel router down it. First, I use a piece of PVC pipe to really press the cement together. The Dremel router is my old model Dremel tool on a router style base that they made. I put a grinding tip into the Dremel and I measure how deep I need to cut to fit the core. Let's start with the side that's got a one, that'd be nice. Yeah, that's all of, when you measured it, you know it's 14. You measured it, you know it's 14, you idiot. All right. I adjust the cutting depth to two millimeter. I cut this layer of foam two millimeters deep, but only where it needs it. The other half that I haven't cut yet, that only needs a one millimeter deep cut. Then I reset the cut depth to 12 millimeters. That way, it can reach past the first layer of foam and cut out two millimeters in the bottom layer. And then I'll reset the depth to 11 and redo that side as well. I check the fit of the core. Oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> and then check the fit of the top layer. No bulge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I wanted. That's great. I apply contact cement to both sides of the layers. While I wait for the cement to dry, I use some Gorilla Glue to glue the core onto the foam. I spray a little water on the core to help activate the glue, and then roll the golf club shaft once it's in place to help spread the glue. Have I mentioned that you need to be careful when sticking foam together with contact cement? Because you can't reposition the foam. Once the cement touches each other, it just sticks. If you try to pull them back apart, you can easily tear the foam. Just a warning and I'll mash the layer down again just to be sure I have really good adhesion. 
actually flat. It's actually flat. Nice. Okay. <laughs> now that all the layers are glued together, I use my bandsaw to cut down to the pencil line of the pattern. Then I taped a carpenter's pencil onto some 12 millimeter foam to get the center line along the edge of the foam blade. Then I can follow that line with the bandsaw table set to 45 degrees. And when I flip the sword over and cut again, I can get the look of a cutting edge on the foam sword. I wanted to add a fuller on the blade. That's the groove that runs down the middle. And in order to keep the line straight, I set up my cause tools ruler to be the right distance from the fuller line. And then I could use the Dremel again, but this time with a wide, flat, yet rounded grounding bit. I wanted a wide fuller on this blade, so I set the ruler again on the other side and add a second fuller line. I wanted to do this first when the foam was just flat on the table, but I was afraid the fuller lines would be off center once I glued all of them together. I felt it was safer to do now because I had more control over where the line would actually be. The next part to make is the cross guard. This is built exactly the same way with three layers of 10 millimeter foam and then cut it out with my bandsaw following my pattern line. This time I add some six millimeter foam on either side. That'll make it a little bit thicker than the blade. And using my newer model Dremel, I grind the six millimeter down to meet the main stack of foam and then bevel the edges all the way around the cross guard. I also add some other dimension to the cross guard ends. Then I change out the bit and round off the base of the cross guard. I think that's good enough for the basic shape. What I need to do is drill a hole through it so the tang can fit. I do that squarely, that's gonna be kind of fun. I use a half inch Forstner bit to drill the hole so the golf club will fit. I start to test fit the parts because I need to cut the shoulder of the blade for the best fit. I use the cutoff piece from the cross guard as a pattern to mark my blade and then make the cuts of my bandsaw. Definitely fits on one way better than the other. Next, I'm thinking about how to make the grip. Now, I wanted to use wood because I can get the wood to taper in the bottom, which I can't do with a PVC pipe, and that's why I wanted to use wood. I cut down a piece of wooden closet rod to make my grip, and then I set the piece vertically in my drill press vise and drill a hole just big enough to fit over the end of the golf club. To taper the ends down, I sand the wood with both my belt sander and the disc sander. It takes just a few minutes, but I do get the shape I want. So I am gonna take one shortcut when it comes to the grip. You see, when you actually look at it closely, the grip has a weave of leather going down it. That's beyond my skill level, so I'm just gonna be wrapping it in leather. Contact cement goes on the leather and on the wood. I mean, what else am I gonna glue this together with? I cut the first edge straight, that way I'm starting with a clean edge and it'll be easier to cut the other side to match. And I cut through both sides and then clear out the extra leather. Add a little more contact cement and close up the seam. I use some rubbing alcohol to wet down the leather and to get through the waterproofing if it has any. I cover it with my one color of leather dye. And then I immediately coat it again with some black liquid shoe polish because I want a darker color than I get with the brown dye that I have. It'll dry lighter than it is now, but that's okay with me. So the last piece that I have to make is the pommel. Right, I got some decorations to do on the cross guard and, and up the blade, but the piece I gotta make is the pommel. And the center, it looks black and white here, the center is actually kind of just a, a, like a spherical ruby. It's a metallic red with a, with a gold claw around it. And it just so happens that the spherical part is pretty much a cat toy which makes me really happy. Now, of course, this is just three middle layers of cat toy, but I went to the pet store <laughs> and bought more cat toys. So I've got more cat toys. <laughs> Two more cat toys. I start working with some 10 millimeter foam and the cat toy to get a claw shape that I like. I cut the sides on a curve and on an angle because they need to get smaller towards the ends. <laughs> First coat is practically completely absorbed by the cat toy. And because the 10 millimeter foam is kind of strong and this is a fairly tight radius for it to fit to, I'm gonna do at least two coats of contact cement. 
Then I carefully wrapped the foam, following the lines of the ball. I still didn't like the look of the edge of the foam. That's not bad, but that's wrong. I sanded down the sharp edge into a shape that I liked, and that looked correct to the movie. There are etchings and decorations all over the sword. For the cross guard, I poked holes in the pattern where all the lines intersected, and then connected the dots to make the lines. I used a chisel tip on my wood burner to carve, cut, melt the lines into the foam. On the two straight lines, I used a metal ruler to help. I started to do the same thing on the blade, but the flame design was too complicated for just connect the dots, which got me thinking. What if I did that? What if I cut all the odd flames out this side and all the even flames out this side or whichever, then I can draw them all in, flip it over, draw them all in again, and I'll have all the flames. I cut the pattern out. I made mistakes, but I made sure the same mistake was mirrored on either side, which kept everything balanced. After tracing both sides of the pattern of the blade, it worked perfectly. Same wood burner, same chisel tip to make these lines, and keep a smooth, constant motion, and the lines come out really good. And now I have a Trans Am style Phoenix flame on my sword. Something new that I've been trying recently is to coat the finished prop with a layer of contact cement. Now this has dangers, of course, because I could get stuck to something that I don't want. But what it does do is it gets a smoother coat over the foam, especially over the fuzzy stuff from sanding. I let the parts dry for at least an hour before I spray them with black plastic dip. They come out looking much smoother than they would without the glue. You just need to use the newer, thinner cement when you do this, not that thicker, dried stuff that's been in the glue pot for a while. That'll leave lots of brush marks. Then I spray each part the color they're supposed to be. It's nice to have these separate, because I don't need to tape anything off. Crazy. <laughs> Too bad I don't want it that shiny. I'm gonna have to knock it down. Let's glue these together first. I glue the pieces together and paint the gem on the pommel with a metallic red paint. I really want the details of the flames and other etching lines to stand out. So I water down some black acrylic paint, put it directly into those etch marks, and then wipe it off the surface. And wiping the black acrylic paint provides a small bit of weathering to the blade that really adds to the effect. Most of the materials I used are available for order, and you can have them shipped right to you. I put a part list and some links in the description. I've got the Curse Crusher from Onward. This was a lot of fun to make, and I'm really happy with how well the flames turned out. Uh, using the chisel tip the way I did here, this was a first for me. I've used wood burners before, but uh, this gave me better results than, than the majority of the panel lines that I have on the Gundam. Sorry, Joe. And Onward, I really enjoy it as a Pixar movie. One of the things I really, this is kind of weird, really enjoyed about Pixar was that I was at the Pixar campus the day that they released the title Onward publicly. The important part of that is I was at the Pixar campus. That was awesome. So one of the artists, her, her name's Athena, she actually worked on Onward. Uh, she invited me to come down to meet her son because her son enjoys watching the show and hopefully he still does. Hello there, young sir. And so, yeah, I'd love to meet him. That sounds great. And then she offered to give me a tour of Pixar. It's like, okay, yeah, count me in. So Athena, Thank you very much for a, for a wonderful trip on that particular day. I really enjoyed coming down to the Pixar Studios. And hello again to your son. He's a wonderful young gentleman. And I hope that if you two are watching, you enjoyed the way I've made these props. They're out of foam, of course, because this is how Odin makes. You know, once it's glued together, I don't think I'm going to need a uh, poster board in this. Watch me eat those words. Perfect. <laughs> the pommel's simple. It's like a giant circular sapphire. It's red, though, so it's a ruby. I want to thank NetHeads, Alexander Buseas, and all of my Patreon supporters. 
My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.